So tomorrow, the 22nd of January, uh, it's the 10th anniversary of Father George Ham going home to God. And so uh, we've been using his chalice at every Mass this weekend, uh, remembering him, asking him to pray for us. Uh, and uh, it's a silver chalice, it's a beautiful chalice, and I, I try to use it at least at one Mass uh, every single weekend, and, uh, along with uh, Father, Dick's, Father Dick's chalice. So we do remember him, all that he has done for us, and especially his legacy for, um, for young people. Father Ham Memorial Fund for, uh, for young people. Also, uh, tomorrow uh, marks the uh, 46th anniversary of Roe versus Wade, and what we do as a Catholic church, uh, tomorrow we're called to a day of prayer and penance, prayer and penance uh, to pray for human life respecting human life at all its stages. And uh, so I, I, I want us to take that seriously. Uh, if you're uh, penance, really, uh, two things uh, would, would be almsgiving, give, give, giving resources, money uh, to different organizations, sharing, and then fasting. And I, I don't want us to uh, uh, not think that fasting is, is important. We don't know the power of fasting. And really, uh, Jesus said once, this can only be driven out by prayer and fasting. So if you're over 14, tomorrow you can do some fasting, maybe give up alcohol or any kind of a drink or cut back on food uh, and, and uh, maybe eat vegetables. It might even be very healthy. But take that seriously, okay? And of course, if you're over 59, you don't have to fast. So. Uh, but I, I think we're living longer. We're living longer. So if you feel you're able to, to fast tomorrow for life, I, I, I highly recommend that we take that day seriously, a day of prayer and penance uh, tomorrow. Uh, next weekend, Barbara Richards is going to speak at all the Masses. She wasn't able to this weekend, but, but she's going to speak to us about the Lighthouse Pregnancy Care Center, give us an update. Uh, on how we're doing and in, in ways that we can help, uh, items that she might need. So she'll be here at all the Masses uh, next weekend. Now, remember I've been saying that the Bible is, is a library. It's not one book. It's a library containing all kinds of literature, uh, some historical, uh, some legalistic rules and regulations, uh, the, the Psalms that, that Scott Lonsbury just, the Psalms, all the 150 Psalms, they're music. Those are lyrics to songs. And we don't have the melodies left, but we have the words. And so they're meant to be sung, 150 different songs. So they're, they're songs. Some of, the, some of the Bible is historical books, some are prophetic. Uh, and now, what we have this morning, the book of Jonah, it's an Old Testament parable. It's a story. And it's not historically true, but a parable is the vehicle. And Jesus taught mostly with parables. The parable is the vehicle that carries the spiritual message, the spiritual truth. So it does have truth. It has spiritual truth. And kind of quickly, uh, uh, Jonah is very narrow-minded. And, you know, the parables are not about Jonah. They're about God. Uh, and Jonah is very narrow-minded, and he has his enemies, the Ninevites. He, doesn't, he wants the Ninevites eliminated. And in the story, God wants Jonah to go to the Ninevites and preach repentance. And he doesn't want to go to the Ninevites. So what does he do? He heads in the total opposite direction. He gets on a ship and heads for Spain. Well, in the story, uh, there's a big storm that comes up. And the sailors say, hey, why are we having this storm? It must be because of this Israelite, Jonah. 
He must be the cause of the, of the storm. We're all going to uh, drown. So they throw him overboard. And then Jonah is swallowed by this big fish, this big whale, and he's in, he's in the fish for three days, which is symbolic of Jesus being in the tomb for three days. huh? So he's in this condominium there for three days, and then he gets uh, spit up on shore and eventually has to go and preach to the Ninevites, and they all repent immediately. Now the big thing, it's about God that God doesn't give up on Jonah, that God is going to transform Jonah from a narrow-minded person into somebody who's going to preach salvation even to his enemy. Extraordinary, extraordinary parable in the, in the Old Testament. But keep that in mind. God doesn't give up on Jonah. God transforms him. And God doesn't give up on us. God doesn't give up on us. Now let's take a look at the gospel. Let's say that Jesus as a rabbi, as a young rabbi, had about a, a hundred disciples. In other words, people who were his followers. They came to listen to him every time they could. And, and he was their teacher. They were his disciples, his followers. And what, what most of the rabbis did, they would have an inner circle. And so now he's going to choose from his many disciples 12 apostles. And he prays to his father to guide him. And he comes down and selects his apostles from his disciples. And so when he comes along to Simon, Peter, and Andrew, they already know him. They know him. He lives in Capernaum. There are fishermen there. And he calls them personally by name, come and I'll make you fishers of men. And they abandon their nets, they abandon their trade, and they become his first apostle. Then he comes to the next set of brothers, James and John, same thing. They're with their father, Zebedee, with the hired men. They have a little fishing industry. They abandon it all, give it all up, and they become his, his apostles. Uh, we're all called by him as well. Every one of us is called to be a disciple, to be a follower. He knows us uh, by name. Now I just throw this out to you. Do you think if you were called as Peter and Andrew and James and John, you knew Jesus personally for three, at least for three years, were called to be his apostles, that once you follow him, everything's going to be just terrific. Everything's going to be rosy. You're going to live happily uh, forever. Uh, live, uh, live happily uh, from, from, uh, from, from now on. That no more problems as long as we follow Jesus. Well, he tells us, if you're going to follow me, take up your cross every day. He tells us, he, do, he doesn't deny the cross. That, that, that we're going to have joys and sorrows, we're going to have uh, blessings, we're going to have crosses. All of these are part of following Him. All of them are part of following Him. And do you think that uh, being His apostles, that they would never sin again? That they would never fall, that they would never abandon Him or betray Him? Once they said yes and gave up everything, gave up their livelihood, that they would never uh, fall, they would never sin. Well, you know, I think there are some people who from childhood have been faithful to Jesus Christ. Mary, his mother. I think a little Tres of Lisieux, the little flower, I think she fell in love with Jesus Christ as a little girl and was faithful to her to him, I, I doubt if, if she ever sinned. I, I doubt it. I even think our own patroness, St. Catherine Drexel, well, like the little flower, she had this beautiful relationship with God, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, as, as just a little kid. And I think she was faithful her entire life. She lived like a, into her 90s. I don't think she ever sinned. I really don't. And she gave the entire 
Drexel fortune uh, to share with the Native Americans and the recently freed slaves. I think she was, uh, she was a, real, a real follower, very loyal. Uh, but um, I, I don't think that's my story. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't. I, I, I think most of us, I'll, I'll say that, uh, uh, most of us have our ups and downs. And we have our, uh, you see us at our best and you see us at our worst. Most of us have, 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 have sinned. And that's why I like St. Peter. I am a fan of St. Peter. Because here he is now, the first apostle called. And he's going to be named the head of the apostles. He's going to be the first pope of our church. And, and he's a natural leader. He's the one who, who uh, will, will identify Jesus as the Messiah. You are the Messiah. We've been waiting for you. Our Jewish people have been waiting all. You're the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, man has not revealed this to you, Peter, but God has. And upon your faith, upon the rock of your faith, Peter, I'm going to build my church. Wow. Wow. And then a few minutes later, Jesus mentions that the cross, he's going to have to go and die on the cross. And Peter says, we can't let that happen to you. We can't let that, that's not going to happen. And Jesus turns on him and says, get behind me, Satan. They're tempting me. You're thinking as men do, not as God. See, so here he was, the rock, and then he's tempting Jesus. It gets worse. It gets worse at the Last Supper. One of you's about to betray me tonight. Peter, I'll never betray you. I'll die for you. This is Peter now. Tonight, you're going to deny me before the cock crows three times, Peter. You're going to deny me. And he does. And he goes out and he weeps. He fell. He sinned. He denied his Lord three times. And they say that the, the lines of the tears, the red marks, stayed on his cheeks for the rest of his life. He wept so bitterly. He fell. And then, then the, the, in, the, in the agony in the garden, when, when, he, when he wants them to pray, Peter does, he's asleep. He's asleep. He doesn't pray with them. And when they come to arrest Jesus, Peter and all the apostles run away. They all abandon him. Uh, kind of like, a, in a certain, you could say a coward. You could say that. Look at all those times he fell and God didn't give up on Peter. He didn't. And after the resurrection, the risen Christ meets Peter and instead of yelling at him, embarrassing him, putting him down, he simply says, Peter, do you love me? For every time he denied him, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? And he rebuilt him. He didn't give up on Peter, and he became the foundation of, of our church. And eventually, he, he died on a cross on Vatican Hill, upside down at his own request. That's why the Vatican, St. Peter's Basilica, is on Vatican Hill. That's where Peter gave his life. He became this great saint. God didn't give up on him. He fell, he got up, he fell again, he got up, he fell, got up, God restored him. So I, I say to you, um, if I could choose any of the 12 apostles to confess my sins to, to go to confession, it wouldn't be young John. I, there's no contest. I would ask, I want to go to confession to St. Peter. That's the guy, because he would understand. He would understand uh, human weakness, and he would understand... Uh, failing and falling, uh, and, and yet God restored him. That, that gives me such great confidence. It really does. So uh, uh, never give up on yourself because God doesn't. Never give up on each other, and, and, and let us not in any way be condemning each other, but trying to encourage each other uh, and helping, helping each other up after we fall. Okay? Let's help each other up uh, after we fall and, and, and have St. Peter as the foundation of our faith, that God loves us and God does pick us up and restore us.
Now we have a special treat this morning, uh, some, some of our young people. So um, Gertrude Hammond and Mrs. Hammond, would you come up? And they've been visiting us here at all of our, our masses this weekend. Thanks, Father Cole. This morning, I'm joined by some young people from Kingswood Regional High School and from our parish. They have been here all weekend at the parish at all of the masses, and Father Cole has very generously allowed us to invite them to be here. The young people at the lock-ins this year have been talking about, and in religious education, the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. We did our sparkle boxes at Christmas time, and Rachel Perro, who's standing behind me, and Grace Trites, at the November lock-in spoke about a service club that they're in at school called Nights Against Hunger. And these are young people, these are student, this is a student-led organization that serves their own peer group in the Kingswood Regional High School and Governor Wentworth School District to fight against hunger. And so Father Cole, especially this weekend, as we remember Father Ham, who was so committed to our youth and, and their ability to live as disciples of Christ and continue to pass on the faith and to have us pass on to faith to them. Father Cole, in his commitment to that as well, has allowed them to be here this morning to share about their organization. So I want to, I want to introduce this morning uh, Rachel Perro, if you are not familiar with Rachel, uh, their student advisor, Jen DeCarmo, who's also been here all weekend, and this young man, Cameron Stodges, who would like to share about the Nights Against Hunger for just a moment. All right, please stand now. And uh, 